Hey, how's it going? And today I'm just doing a quick video on Lightwave 2020. I just upgraded to it and I'm just kind of taking it through its paces. One of the things that I'm most interested in is the global illumination. If you go to the manual online, it says right here, a lot has changed in Lightwave. That's absolutely true. They've made some big changes. One of the big changes is this new global illumination methodology. And if I click on that, it takes us to this page. And what's interesting to me about this is this, the new GI with primary and secondary bounce plugins and if you click on that it'll say you come down here to the bottom it gives you this nice little table of some possible settings here and if you look at it you got one which is blotchy two which is too dark and three which is too slow <laughs> and four, which is better, and five. Now, I would think that that's the one that we, we would want. Now, Lightwave also comes with this test scene. It's here somewhere. And so I thought I would just kind of walk through this real fast. My thinking is, is that when you get it, you should find out really what the best settings are for the absolute best renders, and then back off from there for faster render times. So that's my, my thinking on it. I don't know why you wouldn't always want the best possible render. A lot has changed, but then a lot is still the same. One thing I'd like to point out before I go into the new thing is that the old stuff still applies. So you might notice some aliasing over here on the chairs. There's really fine objects. And if you want to look at that, you've got to go to properties and probably increase your camera sample sizes. And you'll just have to try different ones to, to see where, where you want to be on that. And it does, of course, increase your render times. The other thing is the filter radius you don't want to bump that up too high but if you're getting some aliasing you might want to put up to 0.8 you probably don't want to go much higher than than one if you come over here and you go to render properties and see render properties and you go to buffers and you click here on final render you have noise filtering here and then you've got these also different kinds of filters that can help with the aliasing you might want to use gaussian or circle if you're noticing aliasing on something fine detail like the a chair in the scene don't forget about all that and then the other thing oops i forgot one thing here if i go into render properties you also might want to increase these samples as well i don't know you could go to four on them everything else i think you can remain on the default diffuse bounces you don't usually want to go over three on that so i would say you know go to three reflection refraction subsurfacing pump those up to four on your camera sampling your camera properties you might want to bump this to 618 increase the filter radius a little bit and then other than that those are kind of the old settings that i would always play around with on any scene and then on this one we go up to gi options this is the new and improved world that we're living in so this pretty much you would stay with the defaults on all of this what's kind of interesting i'll tell you that a couple things that are confusing to me a little bit on this on the secondary cache you do want to enable these settings, the specular, glossy, and SSS. The other thing is you probably want it on frame. Frame is for any animated object in your scene. And, and for what I do, I mostly always have something animated in the scene. So frame is what I'd be using most of the time. There's another option here for scene, and you'd use that for if there is no animation, but you maybe have the camera moving through the scene. For the most part, I would think I would just leave it on frame because I would think most people would have something animated. And this interpolation accuracy, that helps smooth it out. So if you do have some aliasing, you might want to bring that down a little bit. So not too far, but maybe make it maybe 20 or something like that. So just play around with these kind of key settings. Now, the one thing also that's kind of interesting about this, you want to bake out the secondary cache first. So there's a button here. I guess what's weird about it is you actually got to click three buttons now where you only have, you used to have to click one as far as I know. They recommend you do the bake out this first and then it bakes and it takes a little while for that to kind of do its thing. And of course the scene looks uh, terrible. As far as I understand it, this is putting down primary evaluation points. And then you bake out the primary cache by clicking frame there. And these are saved in their own file types in their own folders somewhere on your hard drive. Like this is stored in the Radiosity primary and the other one's stored in Radiosity secondary, and it's actually generating a file. And then once you got all that done, then you just come over here and go render frame. And then it does its, its thing. I added additional settings, so of course the scene takes a little bit longer. But overall, I thought it was a very, a very nice render and I didn't really see any profound aliasing on it with those additional settings added. But again, you'll have to play around with it. And what I would suggest you do is find out what the best settings are, like what settings get you the best render possible, and then start backing off of those if you're concerned about render times and trying to get to where you want to get with everything. So I won't sit here and talk while this is rendering out, but I'm really excited about the new 
2020 and I think it's a, a nice improvement. It's a step in the right direction. I'm excited about doing a video later about all the features and kind of doing a walkthrough. Right now I'm just trying to get my mind around some of these newer features, these newer, more sophisticated features. So anyway, take care, have a nice day, and I will talk to you later.